almost there and there we go <coughs> ah. being punished for my crimes against music what's up hacksters it is uh friday and i've been watching way too many uh old snl skits so um i thought that i would do a weekend update this is not going to be as entertaining as your SNL weekend update, but it should be fun. Um, there's a couple of things that I talked about in videos recently, and those include this meadow board from uh, Wilderness Labs, as well as... Ooh, let's get, get more focus. Yes! Focus! Come on, we can do this. There we go. The F7 Micro. And then also I talked about the Circuit Python virtual pet from Kevin Neubauer. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. I sort of assume that it's like Germany, German, German E. Oh no, I've got two poops on here. Let me take care of that real quick. Uh, I have to clean this pet. Um, we'll take care of that. Oh no, oh no, oh no, I can't do it anymore. Oh no. <laughs> uh, well, what if I reset it? Okay. I think I, I killed my pet by not cleaning it up after it. That's, uh, that's really unfortunate. <sighs> Anyway, so those are the two things that I wanted to update you on because I got notes from the people who made them. Uh, so, first up, the Wilderness Labs folks wrote to me to say, uh, Hey Alex, glad you got a meadow into your hands. Just caught your video. Uh, thought I'd clarify some things for you. Sounds like you didn't get the letter that came along with the dev kit that had links to getting started, etc. That is true. I did not get the letter uh, because this was given to me by somebody else who ordered the kit. Uh, and so they gave me all the pieces parts, which is very nice. Uh, but <laughs> unfortunately, uh, we didn't got, not quite get all the information. So uh, here's the info. The wooden thing, which I was like, oh, look, it's a coaster. Awesome. <laughs> and of course, it's got some holes in it. So of course, it's actually a baseboard. Um, check out the instructions for putting it together. And we'll look at that page in a second. Uh, it's a feather form factor, but as you noted, it actually has extra pins. Uh, it's because we added CAN for communicating to your vehicle, for example, uh, and more GPIO. Cool! So more input and output pins. But you can still plug feather wings into it, which are the uh, basically add-ons for feather format boards. Uh, we match their pinout. Cool. Uh, and then they say, speaking of pinout, uh, and by they, I mean Brian Kostanich. Thank you for emailing me. Um, check out the I.O. here. And there's another link we'll look at in a second. Uh, and then they also have upgraded it to 32 megabytes of RAM. Very cool. And put us in touch with uh, Jorge, the person who developed most of the tutorials on Hackster for this board. So I'm going to try and do a, an interview, and we'll see if that works out. So without further ado, let's take a look. Uh, here is the video I'm referencing, which is linked in the description of this video. It's basically an unboxing. Um, here is the assemble the meadow board info. So here is this coaster thingy that I was talking about. Um, with a, So it fits a breadboard as well as the meadow board with soldered on headers. And then there's little standoffs uh, slash bolts to attach the uh, board to the board, as you see. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe this time I'll actually peel off the extra uh, little bits of paper here. Do, 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 do. The board is going to get mounted on the other side of this, but it's really nice. So like it's really easy to mount a breadboard right next to your, to your meadow board. And before I do this, I want to show you how, or maybe I should do this after words actually, but look at this. This is a feather wing. This is an Adafruit blue fruit uh, feather. And then this is a motor controller feather wing. And if I pull that off of there, it does indeed go right on top of there. Beautiful. And if I had headers inserted in the meadow board, which I will in a second, uh, then that would work just beautifully. So we're going to flip this over. The breadboard goes here. I can easily just peel the adhesive off the back of these. Almost all these little breadboards, this size and the smaller ones, and even the larger ones come with uh, an adhesive on the back. So you can just peel off the paper and then stick it down to whatever surface. And I'm going to actually go ahead and solder these on because it's Friday. Let's have some fun. 
so doo -doo -doo. it's been a while since I soldered anything on camera. Uh, as you might be able to tell, things are a little squished here right now. Uh, you can see that there's like maybe two inches here between me and the and the table, and then like I'm right up against the wall because we're doing some renovations and so. But it's really nice to be back behind the desk. Uh, so exciting, and I'm going to go ahead and solder some stuff for the first time in ages. Um, yeah. So, you could put he male headers or female headers on here. I'm going to put the female ones on, like so. And I'm just going to set it up so that they sort of sit flat on these, which uh, for a new or inexperienced person with soldering might not be your best move, but for me, it tends to work pretty well. Is that flat? That's pretty well flat. Cool. And I s yeah, I've switched on my soldering iron. I'm going to put some solder on here. And I'm going to do two pins to start with. Those are my, um, just going to tack solder these on so that those sort of hold the two sets of headers in place. And then I can take a look and make sure everything's nice and neat and pretty. That looks pretty nice. Yeah. Cool. Those are flush. Yes. Gorgeous. OK, so now I can go ahead and solder the rest of these on. I forgot. Um, it's been a while since I did this, so uh, I forgot that I've been using lead-free solder. Works really well in most cases. You gotta be a little bit more careful careful with the temperature, and of course the flux and stuff. I've found actually that this stuff tends to spit a little bit more, so if I were more careful, I should really be wearing um, some safety glasses while I'm doing this because. I have gotten sort of hit with a couple little globs on my hands, whereas usually I don't have that problem with lead solder. But at the same time, there's numerous reasons to go with lead free. Uh, Zach Ferdine a while ago did a really cool Twitter thread about it and convinced me to make the switch. Plus, like, it appeals to my hubris, you know? Like, <laughs> uh, I'm badass enough that I can just do lead free and it's not a problem. Like, Zach does the most amazing little tiny um, soldering projects you would not believe. He'll, like, replace one LED in a, in a badge or something with five teeny tiny little ones, and you wouldn't even know unless you look really, 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 really closely. Like, just little tiny surface mount LEDs attached with tiny little wires. It's ridiculous. So if he can do it, you know, with those tiny little things, I think I can solder some headers on with lead-free solder, and it comes out pretty much fine. The flux makes it look messy, but those are pretty nice little little domes. Look at that. I try not to brag much, but I like my soldering skills. I've done a lot of that over the years. OK, cool. Yeah, so now we've got these headers in here. What are we going to do next? Tell us, Brian. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Place breadboard and meadow to the bread baseboard. Um, cool. Yeah, like that. I don't think I'd have to solder anything else, so let's clean that and put it away. Remove the plastic blah, blah, blah. Stick the breadboard down. And I'm going to make sure not to cover up these holes that are on here but just sort of center it between them. Oh, I need whole space for nuts as well. I think that's I think that's plenty. Okay, cool. Boom. Building the slabs. And then I'm going to put this guy over here and uh, you'll notice that now that I have these headers soldered on, it doesn't fit flush against the board. And to work with that, they tell us to put the bolts in. Um, like so, and then we're going to put a nut on each one, and that basically gives it a little bit of a spacer, 
such that it will, uh, you know, it gives a little bit of an elevation so that the solder joints are isolated from the board. Very nice. You can tell a lot of thought went into this and I love it. What are these tiny hex nuts? I might have to grab my screwdriver set from over there. <laughs> Glad I didn't lose that little bolt because uh, I have noticed that the this studio, this entire office in fact, has tiny little cracks going around seemingly the entire edge of the office and uh, if you drop anything on the floor in the wrong way, it will roll down into one of those cracks, possibly even into the room below us. <laughs> or maybe into the, the space between, but I really don't think there is any. Uh, and never be seen again. So, I'm trying to be careful. Okay, cool. One of these is rattling. Which one is it? Oh, it's this one I just put on. There we go. Stop it. <laughs> Perfectionism. Okay, did they say to put the... Which way did they say to put it? Yeah, facing up like that. Very nice. And, oh yeah, it just slots down into there. That was very satisfying. And now I'm just gonna place these nuts onto here. Beautiful. If I had more patience right now, I would dig out my little screwdriver set and take my needle nose pliers and tighten up both sides really nicely, but I don't. In case you haven't been watching for long, I do not have the kind of patience that it would take to do that. But uh, I'm very excited to be getting this all mounted up pretty. Uh, yeah, and if you wanna know more about this kit, then check out the previous video and just ignore everything I said about this being a coaster. <laughs> okay, cool, look at this. Nice. Na -na 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 -na. Wilderness Labs, gorgeous. What did it say about the meadow board? Tell us, what are you? IoT slash connected things. So, the meadow board is a thing of where the .NET standard 2.0 meets IoT, so it's for working with .NET, C Sharp, etc., uh, and uh, the Internet of Things. And then here's that I.O. page that we talked about earlier. Uh, this is in developer.wildernesslabs.co slash meadow slash meadow. What happens if we just go to the developer page? Does it take us? Yeah, okay, cool. There's all these meadow guides and stuff. Uh, nice. And I think this is the page we just came from. Cool. Very navigable. Very nice. Uh, they tell you about what PWM is. Um, they tell you about the voltage tolerances of the pins, which is nice, like here. Uh, yeah. Great. Oh, here. This is what I'm after. IO power tolerance. Very important if you're working with sensors or actuators and stuff like that. Even if you're driving a motor, it can... Uh, do it can it can push power back into the pin that it's running on, so you got to be careful. Um, and then yeah, some some little examples and stuff. Very cool. Thank you for sharing that. So the other one that I kind of messed up a little bit on. Well, no, I just didn't have all the information. This was cool. This was a uh, an update on a previous uh, sort of unboxing that I did. And we just did a deep dive into this board as well as other DIY virtual pets, sort of like modern day Tamagotchi slash Gigapet type things. And mine has currently pooped itself again. So let's take care of that. <laughs> it did come back to life. Okay, feed slash water, play game. Um, what's the best way to do this? Here we go. Um, sleep, enable, and then says clean. It makes a little shovel noise and it shovels away the poo. Fantastic. Uh, this is by Kevin. And 
let's move this stuff. Ba -ba -ba. Oh yeah, I was gonna show you really quick. Uh, the feather wing fits on there. So if I wanted to drive motors from this guy and hadn't already bent the pins up a little bit, then I could just push that into there and it fits. I'm not going to do it right now because I don't actually, well, okay, I sort of did it. Um, but I don't actually want to drive motors from this thing right now, so I'm not going to. We'll come back to that later. I will. Not on, not right now. <laughs> so, yeah, this virtual pet fella uh, stores its CircuitPython uh, files on it. CircuitPython is Adafruit's version, uh, their fork of MicroPython that has some extra optimizations, and this is designed for making your own Tamagotchi-type digital virtual pet. So exciting. I've got super uh, exciting plans for it. Exciting to me. Uh, and yeah, so I got some new info from Kevin. The reason that I did this video now was because I saw that he has published uh, a new module To make your own one of these, if you don't like the design, uh, not only is it already completely open source, but now Kevin's designed this module for it, which is extremely exciting. Makes it even more easy to DIY. So that's super cool. Um, and he sent me some extra info. So let's take a look at that. He says, Hey, saw you talking about you stream today, etc., etc. More details on the code that will make changing it easy for you. Because I was like, there's a bunch of stuff here. Like, where do I start? In my brain. Uh, and he says, if you look at virtualpet slash lib slash virtualpetgame.py, it has some basic instructions. I'll copy them below. But I've also plugged it in here so that we can take a look at the files directly from the. Uh, the virtual pet itself. And I've put them in my browser just to make things easier. So sorry for the black on white, terrible formatting, etc. Um, but yeah, so actually, I opened up vir um, virtual pet slash lib slash virtual pet game dot pi on the device. And let's get this actually centered here so we can read it. Cool. Um, and you can see that that's just on file slash volume slash whatever. Oh, CircuitPy is the way that the device shows up uh, when it's plugged in over USB. I'm getting some weird artifacts here, but oh well. Glitch life! <laughs> uh, so CircuitPython virtual pet game for Kevin Neubauer's CircuitPython badge with SH 1106 128 by 64 OLED screen. Uh, want to design your own pet? Paint the screens using pixelart.com. Use existing art for size reference. After painted, encode them in 0 slash 1 format using decode.fr slash binary dash image. And I'm going to show you actually what one of the, uh, let's look at the poo one since that keeps coming up and it's entertaining. <laughs> in a virtual pet slash, pardon me, assets, uh, there's a couple of different files we can look at. For example, for graphics used, here is clean1.png. Uh, pretty straightforward, pretty cute. <laughs> and then that's presumably export the PNG exported from pixel art. And then if we just go straight to the clean1.txt file, which is literally 0 slash 1 encoding is literally zeros and 1s used to make ASCII art. Only it's not ASCII art because uh, when you put this into the display, basically it turns off all the pixels that are zeros, so they go black. And then it turns on all the pixels that are 1, so they go, in this case, blue. Um, actually, you know what? We could look at one, one of these files that we're actually looking at. Uh, where's the walk one? Oh, here's background.txt. Apparently, you can layer them, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's like some little clouds and a sun. Exciting. Uh, what about pet walk left two dot txt? Uh, that's a little harder to see, but it's just like a little sprite. But you can kind of see it. It's easier on these things if you like squint your eyes or if you like make it lower resolution uh, by or if you um, just squish it. 
just just I went to like 90% zoom on here. Okay. Anyway, so pixelart.com. This actually looks like an incredible resource. I've always thought that I didn't have the patience for making pixel art, but having seen this website, it seems much more achievable actually. I love I love the way that pixel art looks. And there's like certain kinds of weather that make me think of it now. It seems like People make such beautiful, calming things. And uh, I looked into the interface here. And for example, they have a daily challenge. Like here is a reef. That's your sort of Inktober prompt type thing, but for pixels. P pixel ember? No. <laughs> Presets for size. Uh, there's all these different things you can do. And then once you're in the interface, you can like, you know, draw around, but then also you can like, you have two colors to draw with, so uh, primary and secondary. Here I'm drawing with white on the background by doing a right click and drag. Um, there's layers, there's uh, different options. Ooh, rainbow color. Wow. Oh, well, it's just black. Uh, what if I do purple? I'm not seeing any rainbows, my friends, but okay, I'm probably doing it wrong. I can hit undo a bunch of times. You can download it. Uh, you can do all these settings, which we just looked at. Super cool. Anyway, so you can use that to make your own little sprites. And then you use this site to, so decode.fr without an E, well, one E, D C O D E dot F R, linked in the description to this video. And I've already tried this out by putting the little Haxter logo in there. Look at that. Look at that. It just turned it into text, zeros and ones. Super cool. Uh, yeah, and what I love about the zero one encoding is that zeros actually look darker on the screen because you've got two vertical lines uh, per character as opposed to ones, which are just one vertical line per character. And yeah, in a monospace font, that's pretty clearly like, it, it makes it really easy to see what your design looks like. You can do different, like a reduced size, you can do an original size, custom width, etc., custom threshold. If you, for example, have a grayscale image, you can use a custom threshold to change how bright or dark it's going to be. Um, yeah. Ooh, you can do an inverted one, too. What happens when I do that? Ooh, yeah. Inverted. Super cool. All these options. Great. These are awesome resources. Thanks, Kevin. Was there anything else? I think there was something else. Oh, yes. So uh, he copied basically some of this stuff, these links, into this uh, Twitter DM. <laughs> uh, he says the virtual pet.py file in the same directory is the object for the pet. So that's this. Oh, sure, I'll stay on that. I'll probably come back to it later. <laughs> I do plan to, to be working on this. So OK, so here's the virtual pet.py file. It has some parameters that you can tweak for like rates for hunger, poop, happiness, etc. Uh, and this is actually how I figured out what the discipline uh, attribute does. Turns out that if you don't discipline it, um, here we go, it decrements constantly. I guess even if you do. Um, so it's going down all the time. So I guess you have to discipline it from time to time to make sure that it's uh, a good cat. But I can't really imagine disciplining a cat anyway. I feel like it's going to be like that image of the lady yelling at the cat and the cat just being like, like, what are you doing? <laughs> I cracked me up. Sorry. Um, yeah, so you can set those rates. Apparently, it does everything more slowly while it's asleep, and then it's got an awake rate. I've never actually seen it go, go to sleep. Uh, I'm curious about that. Oh, there's probably actually a timer for that as well. No? Maybe there's a sleep mode, like if I push a particular button or something. I don't know. Oh, it ages! <laughs> Poop health multiplier. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does this mean? Kevin. Kevin, what does this mean? Okay, it's Friday. Uh, but we still gotta do stuff. Um, the other final thing was one last thing. Unfortunately, there's no easy answer to modifying slash adding behaviors or functions. You just have to hack up the Python code to do what you want, which I think is kind of awesome, honestly. Like, uh, I like Python. I'm always down to learn more. Uh, and this seems like a cool way to do it. 
Uh, all the pet behaviors, minigame, and menu entries are in the virtualpetgame.py file, which was that previous one that we looked at. This one. That has the directions for making your own art. Ooh, look at this. All these comments. So nice! Oh, this is so well commented. Awesome. Uh, and then finally, he just added all these details to his website and says, happy hacking. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, so that's here. It's also in the description of this video, kevinnoibauer.com slash circuitpython, all one word, dash virtual dash pet. Um, or you can just click on a link like a normal person. Um, they referenced the Tamaguino that we talked about as well, which has an update on Hexter. Um, yeah, so this is this is basically exactly what we talked about. Although he also here we didn't get to this, but uh, talks about the audio files as well. Uh, you have to make sure that if you want to use audio, it's a specific type of audio file. And Adafruit has an excellent guide on how to do that with Audacity, which is a free open source. Is it open source? It is open source. Nice. Um, software program available for PC, Mac, and Linux. Mac and Linux. Uh, you can use that to uh, check and convert the files if necessary. Super cool. So thank you, uh, Wilderness Labs folks and Kevin for sending me updates about your stuff. If I've ever featured you in a video and you have an update, uh, feel free to send it over. I may do another like Friday update compilation type thing. I like that. Uh, I like following up on stuff because you know it makes it more interesting. I think to see how things evolve over time and to give extra information if I didn't cover everything. These are some really cool, awesome tools. I think that a lot of people are going to get a lot out of them, so it gives me pleasure to uh, increase the knowledge out there. Let's see if there's any questions on Facebook before we wrap up. Uh, I don't, I can't see the YouTube comments before. Actually, maybe I can. I think it'll just be a pain to look at the YouTube comments before I uh, wrap up, but let's try. I've never tried this before. While that's loading, let's look at uh, Facebook. Daniel from the UK says, hello. Hi, I'm so sorry about your country. Um, Daniel says, I want more tech now, though. Take more money, lol. Uh, and Yanni says, virtual pets. Yes, virtual pets. Cyber pets. Uh, circuit pets. There is a live chat on YouTube. Hey, and we have comments. Okami says, hello. Hi. Uh, Zach says, yes, Audacity is awesome. And I agree. It is great for doing your own music. Um, I've used it for voiceovers for stuff. And you can use it for, oh boy, and all kinds of stuff. It's ridiculous. Um, so it seems like there's a lot of new cool tools that came up in this uh, video. And I want to make sure that uh, all the Audacity is linked in the description as well, so that you can use those for whatever whatever projects you're working on, whether it's these, whether it's uh, other stuff with pixel art or zeros and ones and little OLED screens or uh, or your own weird musical proclivities. Awesome! Have a great weekend. I will see you soon. And as always, <laughs> heck on.